What's up? Extracting energy. Jasper from the Fungi Academy here at Fungi Academy Lab. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered how to make your very own mushroom abstract? Well, you've come to the right place. By the end of this video, you will know how to turn the mushrooms you have found in the wild or have grown yourselves into powerful medicines. Let's start at the beginning. Why do we want to extract mushrooms in the first place? Right? Why can't I just not eat this chunky bit? Ah. Mushrooms are made out of chitin, and chitin is a large structural polysaccharide. Poly means many, and saccharide means sugar. So, they are very long sugar chains. The structure of chitin was determined by Albert Hoffman in 1929, and that's the same Hoffman that synthesized LSD. Yeah. Chitin is responsible for the toughness of insect exoskeletons, and is the reason why mushrooms like reishi and uh, turkey tail are not very edible. As you might have guessed, humans cannot digest chitin. This chitin acts like a sort of safe around all of the medicinal compounds that we find in functional mushrooms. Even the soft and fleshy ones like lion's mane and cordyceps contain these chitin safes. When you consume an unextracted mushroom or an uncooked mushroom, all of the compounds that you want to have in your body, like beta acids, ganaderic acid, crestina, just to name a few, will pass through you in these safes without giving your body the access to the beneficial properties of these compounds. So make sure to look whenever you buy a mushroom supplement if it's extracted or not. A lot of companies sell dried reishi or chaga powder to consumers, and the consumers think that they just get the super powerful medicine in their hands, but actually they just get a powderized version of this chewy hard stuff. In most mushrooms, we talk about two types of compounds that we want to extract. You want to extract polysaccharides, these sugar chains. These are water soluble and include the infamous beta glucans. So besides these polysaccharides, we want to extract acids or fats. And these are alcohol soluble, like reishi has over 350 novel ganoderic acids that are found nowhere else. So where to begin? If we have all of this, where do I start? If you can, you want to dehydrate your mushroom completely. We use a dehydrator. A kitchen version of this bad boy of the brand Excalibur works great too. You can also dry your mushrooms in the dashboard of your car or in front of your window. And this makes sure that all the compounds that you do not need to have in your extract will evaporate. So if you found a reishi or some turkey tails, we advise to chop them up in as tiny pieces as possible. So this is actually a little bit too big before dehydrating them because they're a lot easier to chop up before dehydrating them than after because they become really tough. So after chopping and dehydrating your mushrooms, you want to turn them into a powder or at least as small as possible. This way you have access to all the beneficial compounds to extract. It makes it easier. Howdy, welcome to our kitchen. The Spongy Gammy kitchen. These are fully dehydrated turkey trill, turkey tail mushrooms. Turkey tail mushrooms, and we're gonna just put them through this uh, what the locals call the molina, the mill, and this is used to make uh, corn flour and stuff like this. Well, now we're not making corn flour; we're making turkey tail flour. So this way, the the extracts have like the compounds have more capability of being extracted by this alcohol concoction that we made. <sighs> <sighs> Oh. Wow, that's actually easy. <laughs> a lot easier. From this idea of extracting is where opinions get different. So some people are saying that you want to do the water extraction first. Some people say you have to do the alcohol extraction first. Here at Fungi Kami, we do the alcohol extraction first. The easy way is to put your mushroom powder in a jar filled with alcohol, just like this one. We have our turkey tail powder, and the only thing we're going to do is add the tincture alcohol. So this is not a tillic alcohol that we use in mushroom cultivation. This is actually made for consumption. We use 95%, but anything about 40% should work. Think of vodka or rum. And the old school way is to leave it in an airtight container like this one and shake it up every couple days. So like after shaking it, if you still see a layer on top, you're doing a good job. And it rhymes, that's true. <laughs> Over time, we should see the color get significantly darker and six weeks of this extraction is generally thought to be enough. 
Another way of doing this is to get one of these ultrasonic cleaners or extractors. Ultrasonic extraction uses these frequencies that break open the chitin and can turn this six week process into an 80 minute process. The ones we have uh, are not made for like extracting mushrooms specifically. This is actually an ultrasonic cleaner because the, the ones that are for mushrooms are really, really expensive and this does the job really well. We've, we'll put a link to this one specifically below. So next up, boom, next one. You want to strain the mushroom. So this one is done. So we're gonna strain this and save the alcohol extract and catch it again in an airtight container. So I got like a little sieve or colander and I got my specialized funnel situation. So we do first, first the funnel in the jar, then the sieve. You see, I need the extra hands. So I'm gonna open this guy up first. Funnel, sieve, hold the sieve, and I'm gonna gently pour out this alcohol in this jar. If you have a, some sort of press to squeeze out all the alcohol or all the liquids, uh, that's the best because they will stick in the mushroom powder. Um, but it isn't necessary. We don't have one of these presses, but we just know that these presses exist and we want one. If you have one, send it over to us, please. <laughs> Then we want to do a water extraction of the mushrooms that are inside. So we're just gonna pour this in. To do this, you wanna fill up a pot with unchlorinated water and put like the mushrooms, you wanna put them in first and then fill them up, the water, until it barely covers the mushrooms and they're just submerged. And here again, there's a lot of different ways that people do this. Robert Rogers, who literally wrote all the books on medicinal mushrooms, says you shouldn't let the temperature of the water go above 72 degrees Celsius. And on the other hand, Jeff Chilton, who runs one of the biggest medicinal mushroom extract companies in the world, claims that the temperature hardly influences the amount of beneficial compounds present in the extract. He tests tests all of his batches and he says, doesn't matter if you keep it under 72 or 100. So again, there's a lot of opinions, see what works best for you. We use gas for our hot water extraction and it's really hard to keep the camp temperature stable. So we try to just have it at a low simmer, um, about like 85 degrees, and we do this for about 12 hours. Make sure the water doesn't fully evaporate and you're burning your mushrooms, because you're also burning all the good beneficial compounds in them and you just waste a lot of time and energy and resources. So just make sure to check up on it every once in a while and you can add, easily add water and cook it out later. So again, after this process, you want to strain these mushrooms again. Um, and if you can, you press them. What you can also do is use a cheesecloth to wring them out because we want to capture all of this like powerful water extract. Um, and then you have like a jar of water extracted mushrooms and a jar of alcohol extracted mushrooms. So when you have this jar of water extract and this jar of alcohol tincture, you want to mix them together. And you eventually want to make something like this, which is a shelf-stable medicinal tincture that you can share with your friends, or you can sell, or you can use yourself. And this is called a double extracted tincture. If you do an ultrasonic extraction, you can even call it a triple extracted tincture. But if you want this to be shelf-stable, you want an alcohol percentage to be at least 20%. So if you made your alcohol tincture with 40% vodka or something, you want one part water extraction with one part alcohol extraction to make a 20% alcohol double extracted tincture. Bottle the tinctures in a dropper like this one. We have some fresh ones. And a pro tip, pro tip, woo -hoo! We, uh, we use a syringe because it's, these, these walls are very tiny and getting a column there and this like your, your mushroom thing. It's like your extract is really valuable, right? It's like worked a lot on this. The mushrooms worked hard on this. So with a syringe, you can just fill it up. These are 50 centiliters, boom, or 50 milliliters. So now we want to get the finished product, which is a double extracted turkey tail tincture at 20% alcohol in one of these tiny tincture bottles. Well, I've used all the ways like tiny funnels, um, quantum teleportation, that didn't work. So I found that the easiest way is to do a syringe. This syringe. So you open it, you open this bad boy. Wait, first off, I'll shake the bad boy. Make sure that everything is nice and mixed up. Yeah. And then I just suck out a good old shot of heroin. Wait, what? No. 50 milliliters turkey toe 
concoction. And these bottles should be 50 milliliters, so I don't want any much more. And this is also a great way to measure, oh, 50 milliliters. Know exactly how much is in there. Close it off. Boom. And make sure that they're next to like each other, that you mark them otherwise, like at one point you're gonna have five different types of mushrooms. And you wanna make sure that you're not giving somebody something else that they want, or if you're taking something else, then you wanna have. And this is a nice job. Play some music, listen to a podcast. To wrap it all up, we're gonna give you like a little download of everything that you need. Uh, and that's the following. So you need one of these syringes. You obviously need mushrooms to extract. Alcohol that's higher than 40% or 40% exactly. Some uh, airtight jars and you can check it by uh, like, there's no liquid flowing through it, so there's no air. Um, a large pot. I don't have it right now, I'll have it. Non-chlorinated water, a funnel, optionally tincture bottles or some airtight jars to store your homemade tincture. You want a colander or a sieve to make strain your mushrooms or cheesecloth. A lot of these things are optional and like you'll s a lot of these things are optional. I don't know if even you'll see it. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. And then uh, you can use a syringe. That's what I said, right? Did, did I miss? Oh yeah, if you have an ultrasonic extractor just laying around, that's, that's great. So by now, you know how to make uh, really powerful medicine out of your wildly crafted mushrooms or the ones you grew. If you have comments or questions, go uh, bother somebody else or something. Make sure not to subscribe. Um, what else do people do? Dislike this video, please. <laughs> this is some uh, reverse psychology.